What's up, nerds? In today's video, I'm gonna be going over a very simple Webpack configuration. Uh, we're gonna be going through this step-by-step, step, so you don't really need to know anything about Webpack in order for this to be helpful, hopefully. But we're gonna be going over a configuration that's going to get your JavaScript compiling as well as some post-CSS, because we're gonna be um, integrating Tailwind CSS in this with this, because that's what I'm using for an upcoming course, so I wanted to, to uh, kind of show it off here a little bit. But uh, hopefully this uh, will be helpful to you. If you uh, are new to the channel, then subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly web development tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so kind of what I want to uh, end up with you guys is something that's gonna look like this. Uh, all we're gonna have is a simple uh, site going in here. It's kind of in within the context of WordPress. Uh, we have a package JSON that's just going to have a start script. It's gonna have a config file where we have all of our Webpack configuration. And we're gonna end up with two folders inside of an assets folder, a dist folder that's going to have our main bundle JS as well as our main CSS, which is gonna have all of Tailwind in it. And then we have a source folder that is going to be the source for those two uh, um, places, so or those two files. So the thing that we just have here, just so I can kind of show you that it's working, is that we have npm run start. It's going to uh, find the that uh, webpack config file, and then uh, it's going to build it, and then it's going to actually watch it. So when we uh, add new CSS, or if we add new JavaScript, it will just automatically update. Um, and then we'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Um, this is not too glamorous, but what it shows is that we have a, uh, um, a compiling uh, JavaScript, and we have you know an alert here saying howdy partner. And then we have here a, a Tailwind card, so just showing that all of the, uh, the Tailwind features are working. So let's jump right into the code. All right, so what I have here is in uh, kind of within the context of WordPress, a very simple theme. Uh, we just have a style.css uh, style so we can name the theme, um, index.php with get header and get footer, and then a functions.php function that is actually in queuing our first JavaScript file. So we'll be adding to this and changing it a little bit as we go. So what I want to do first out of all of this is actually talk about um, the package.json. So the first thing that we're going to do is do npm init dash y, just answer yes to all the questions, and it's going to give us our package.json. And so what we need to do from here is we actually need to install Webpack. So npm install dash capital D Webpack space webpack dash CLI. So this is gonna install all the things that actually do all the bundling and then our command line interface for it as well. So once this is done installing, we will jump into it. All right, now that we have those two things installed, as you can see right here, I wanna show you really quick what it looks like right out of the gate. So if we just delete that test script and replace it with just a start script that just runs webpack, if we were to just do npm run start, it's gonna throw an error and it's gonna say it can't resolve source. So by default, uh, Webpack is looking for a source directory. So let's create that real quick, source. And we're going to have a file here called index.js. And we're gonna run an alert. And we're gonna call this, or pass it howdy, because that's my version of hello world. And we are going to run our script again. And instead of a of, of a, an error, it's going to give us a warning saying that uh, an op, a mode has been not, uh, a mode hasn't been set, and it has been set to production for us, which is fine. But now, instead of just our source and node modules directory, we now have a dist directory as well with main.js in it. If we click into that, we've got a whole bunch of magic and then our code, we have an our alert howdy. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go just to our page here, refresh it, and then let's see if we get that howdy. So we get howdy. So everything is working so far. Um, however, 
I'm sure that there's a lot more that we want to do with this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take over um, the configuration because we wanna do a little bit more than what it's doing right now. And we'd rather not pass in a bunch of flags and stuff like that to the CLI. So we're going to create a new file here called webpack.config.js. And we can name this just about anything we want. Um, however, we are going to pass to our start script dash dash config webpack dot config dot js so it knows where our config file is located what and what it's called rather so the way that every webpack config is going to start out is it's going to start out with a module dot exports and it's going to equal an object and so everything between these two curly brackets is going to kind of tell webpack what magic spell to use <laughs> so there's a lot of things that you can do with Webpack, and so I don't want to overcomplicate it by going down too many rabbit holes. But this kind of top layer of, of this object is going to be kind of global settings for Webpack, as well as the main entry point for our JavaScript. So the first thing that we're going to tell uh, Webpack to do globally is we're going to give it a mode. So we can get rid of that warning um, we're going to set it to development mode. Because as you can see, when we ran it originally, it minified everything, got rid of any sort of comments, and over time it's gonna be difficult to read if we need to debug it. So we're going to set it to development mode. On top of that, I'm not a huge fan of having a source and dist kind of floating here in the top of our directory. So this is a WordPress theme. So I kind of want to obscure those two directories, another directory. So I'm gonna do a new folder called assets. And I want to just delete, uh, actually not delete, I'm gonna move source into assets as well as dist into assets as well. So that means we're going to have to change a couple things, um, but first we're going to change what's in our functions.php here, and it's going to be slash assets, then dist, then main.js. So that will then correct that. So it'll be properly enqueued on the WordPress theme. But then what we need to do is we need to actually require something out of node so we can change what the directory is. So we're gonna require path. Path is something that comes right out of node. So we're not installing it with NPM or anything like that. And we are going to set a context. So context is equal to path.resolve. And then so we're going to give it um, our dir name. So this is going to be what we're currently at. And then we're going to say go into assets. And then so it'll just know that's where we're, we're going. And so we want to go into assets, then source, then index.js. It's going to assume source and, and index.js. So then after that, we are, now we know kind of where we're starting. We need to know where to output. So we're going to write output. And then it's going to be an object because there's going to be two things that we need to set inside of here. The first thing is the file name. And we can call this just about whatever we want. But we can call it something very simple here called main.bundle.js. And then the path where that exists is going to be path.resolve. We're also going to give it the dir name. Dir name. And then we're going to say assets slash dist. So that's where that's going to end up. So now this context is going to assume um, source index.js and then the output is going to change this from main.js to main.bundle.js and it's going to put it inside of assets and dist. So again, let's just change from main.js to main.bundle.js. And then let's move on. So Let's uh, actually do one more thing before we, we test this out. And that's going to be passing in a flag that I find super helpful, which is watch true. Now it used to be a lot more difficult than that, but now it's just watch true. So that's all you have to pass in order for it to kind of, you don't have to keep running NPM run start every time that you make a change. So let's uh, delete um, that dist file here, our old one. 
let's make a quick change to howdy. We're going to do a little smiley face out after that. And then let's run npm run start. So if we typed in everything correctly, it looks like it's going to, yep, it did all of what it was supposed to do. And you can see right here, Webpack is watching the files, kind of ominous, ominously watching the files. Um, you can see up here that our bundle is now named bun main.bundle.js and it is unminified. So it is running in development mode. So we're on the right track. So technically, I mean, we're good to go as far as JavaScript goes. Like there's nothing else that I want to do here. We can import files um, and run them. So actually let's just do that really quick. We can say, um, Let's do a new file called test.js and let's export const. Um, let's say, man, just test because, <laughs> you know, we're, we're super crazy like that. Um, and let's just have a function here and it's going to console.log howdy. So we're going to save that and in index.js, we're going to import test from dot slash test. So let's just do that and run test. So it looks like it has been compiling the file successfully. So let's go to our file here. We shouldn't get an alert anymore. What we should get is now a console log that says howdy. And we've got howdy. So now we can import our files. We can do all the things that we normally would want to do with Webpack. All right, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, the next thing that I want to do is I want to get Tailwind up and running. Now with Tailwind, we need to actually add some more configuration. And this is gonna be the bulk of our configuration here. JavaScript is obviously pretty darn simple to get up and running. Um, but the next thing that we need to add down here is we need to add what are called modules and then some rules for those modules. So we're going to start with module and that's going to be an object and then rules, which is going to be an array of objects. Oops. Rules is spelled like that. So inside of rules, you're going to have lots of different objects. You're going to have objects in here that are essentially tasks that you want Webpack to run. Um, and these are going to be things where you pass in options to them. And there's a lot of things that are kind of out of the box with this. So um, the first thing that usually one of these uh, uh, rules will take is it's going to ask you for a regular expression to see what type of file they need to run this task on. So the first option is test. That's what they're going to be testing for. So the, uh, the regular expression in this case is just going to be dot CSS. And then it's um, a dollar sign. We're going to end the regular expression and then we're going to put a comma so we can go down to the next line. So this is the regular expression right here. And this is what we're looking for, which is a file that ends in very specifically dot CSS. The dollar sign is saying the end of the string. So that is, if that is true, then we will have another uh, something run and we're going to use this um, use object. And so with the use object, this is where you're starting to use things called loaders. And these are kind of the individual tasks that run for um, any of these CSS files that it finds. And so specifically with Tailwind. Tailwind uses post CSS and it uses um, a CSS loader and a post CSS loader. So we need to install a few things in order for that to work. So the first thing that we're going to do is quit out of that, clear that, and we're going to do npm install dash capital D um, CSS dash loader and post CSS dash loader. And in order for um, these to kind of do their thing, we're gonna have to do a few more steps inside of here, but we're going to just make sure that we have these installed before we uh, move on. So let's clear that out. And so we're going to have 
a very kind of interesting time with this. Uh, oh, it's not an object. I'm sorry. It's an array. I have over here my notes that it's an array. So this uses as an array. And what this is, is a list of things, a list of loaders to use. And the funny thing about this is that you would think that when these loaders run these tasks that it would run from top to bottom. So if I have, you know, ta you know, task one, then task two, you would think that task one would run before task two. Well, task two is going to run before task one. It goes from bottom to top. So took my brain for quite a tizzy when I learned that. So it was quite, um, <laughs> it was quite a journey, but now that I know it, it, it makes sense. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to inside of this array, pass in our object. And this is the first thing that we're going to give it is a loader. And so this loader that we want to do is the uh, first one that's going to run. And this is going to be the post CSS loader. And what we're going to do with that is pass it a few options. So options, we're going to give it its identity, which is post CSS. And we're going to have some plugins that go along with that. So the two plugins that we need to run inside of this post CSS loader is going to be auto prefixer and tailwind CSS itself. Now those two things are actually required specifically by tailwind. So if you're not using tailwind, you don't have to do this. So we're going to do auto prefixer and uh, tailwind CSS. And so that's going to install those two plugins for us. And so inside of this array, we're going to require tailwind CSS, and we're going to require auto prefixer. So with those two powers combined, we should have a post CSS loader that will work with tailwind. So let's just close out of that real quick. And so once we've run post CSS on our CSS file, the thing that we want to do after that is we want to run it through a CSS loader, just the regular CSS loader, not post CSS. So what this is going to do is this is going to interpret um, the post CSS. And then this next loader is going to interpret that into something that JavaScript can understand. So this loader is actually throwing this uh, CSS into Webpack and it's going to be loaded through JavaScript, which I'll show you in just one second. So the next thing that we're gonna have is another object. And this object loader is going to be CSS loader. And it's going to have one option in here. And this one is very specific to using post CSS. There's import loaders. This option takes either a zero, a one, or a two. And so zero is disabled. One is use post CSS. And two is like use post CSS and SAS or something like that. So we're just going to pass it a one. I know it's confusing and I know it seems arbitrary, but that's the way that you need this to uh, work and with uh, post CSS. So once it uh, runs through post CSS, it's then going to run it into our CSS loader. So let's see what this kind of looks like first um, and go into our source directory and we're going to do a main.css. So now that this has, we have a file in here with .css, that means our webpack config is going to pick that up and run through these tasks. So let's just grab, Oh, I got to grab the little piece from Tailwind over here, just so I don't uh, forget what it is. Because it asks for very specifically a couple of um, at Tailwind functions. So at Tailwind base, at Tailwind components, and at Tailwind utilities. So we're going to save that. And we're going to run npm run start. Now, this isn't actually going to output to our um, page yet. I just want to kind of give you a quick tour of what's going on behind the scenes. So if we go into our source, 
Actually, you know what we got to do? I forgot this part. We have to import um, dot slash main dot CSS in order for this to get going. It's just npm run start here. And once that's good, there we go. That's why now it's good. It's 1.89 megabytes, so it's a big boy. Uh, but now let's uh, look at our main bundle here. Just kind of minimize this for a second. And so what we're going to see here ugh, is we've got all of these different classes, like dot space hyphen y hyphen eight and all this kind of stuff. This is the entirety of uh, Tailwind inside of our bundle all of a sudden. And so what we don't want is for JavaScript to actually inject our CSS into our page because kind of watch what happens is, well, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but it, what it's going to happen is it's going to actually have um, a little bit of a flash of unstyled text. We could probably grab something from the Tailwind documentation over here. Let's grab this like, uh, oh, let's grab a component. Let's grab some navigation. And we'll just grab this navigation. That logo is not going to work, but we can grab this whole thing. So we're going to go into our index.js here. Close out those PHP tags and throw in this Tailwind component. And we can refresh our page. So something that went wrong here is that we actually don't have um, it going from our bundle, our main.bundle.js to our actual um, DOM. So what we need to do is we actually need to install another loader real quick. I know it's loaders on loaders on loaders, but if we do npm install dash d style loader, and the reason why I forgot this is because we're only using it for like two seconds. We're not going to actually allow the, uh, the uh, style loader to live on our site for very long because what that does is it takes that tailwind string that we were just looking at. And what it does is it actually just outputs it into a style tag on the page. And so, that's the part where I, I forgot about it because we don't really want it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Webpack config and right above um, the CSS loader, we're going to do style loader. So it's kind of funny how it works. It transforms post CSS into, you know, CSS and the CSS loader actually turns it into something that JavaScript can understand. And then this style loader takes that um, string and it just outputs it on the page. So. Let's uh, rerun our um, start function here. And then we can rerun this. And now we have our, our styled header here. However, if you kind of like watch me like hard refresh this, you can see that we start to get that flash of unstyled text, the dreaded flash of unstyled, of uns uh, of, uh, unstyled text. Um, but that's because of what I just said, like the, uh, the JavaScript is the one that's handling the styles. And so your styles are loading only after JavaScript has finished loading. And so once JavaScript has finished loading, it injects everything in there. And then you, then you get everything kind of snaps into place, which is super bad ex user experience. So that's why we're not going to use the style loader, but it makes sense to, to show ahead of time. So we're going to ax the, uh, the style loader here. And what we actually need to do is we need to use um, a plugin. So I know that these kind of seemed like plugins, but there's actual literal uh, Webpack plugins that uh, will take the style um, loader's job away from it, and it will actually extract all that, that CSS. It will put it into a CSS file that we can then enqueue normally. So instead of this style loader, what we're going to do is we're going to install the mini CSS extract plugin. So npm install 
dash D mini CSS extract plugin. And while this is installing, we're going to in or actually require it. So I'm just going to copy and paste that because it's a lot to type out. Mini CSS extract plugin, mini CSS extract plugin is being required. And so this is going to go into two places. The first is it's going to be used as a loader. So we're going to use um, the mini ex CSS extract plugin dot loader. So it comes with a loader. And so you can just do dot loader and it will run like a loader. And then right above module here, we are going to have our plugins array. So this is if you have lots of things that are, um, you know, if you use plugins at all, you'll have this array as part as part of your Webpack config. And then you're going to do new mini CSS extract plugin. So with those two powers combined, what it'll do is it'll take that CSS that's in our main bundle. It will actually output something into our dist directory. So let's do npm run start here and make sure that that is working. Webpack is watching our files. It's going to take a second. And now we have a main.css. So now this has all of the things that have to do with Tailwind inside of here. So that's good news. We're going to then uh, kind of enqueue this and, uh, and it won't work over here. So let's, you know, refresh this and it, it should kind of crap out on us. Just let flywheel come back up. Yep, it's not working anymore, which is perfect. And we go back to my Visual Studio code and we're gonna do WP and Q style. This is going to be main style and then get style sheet directory URI. Probably could have just copied what's above slash assets slash dist slash main.css dependencies. It'll just be an array version. Let's do 1.0.0 and then media all for now. So with that, we should now actually get our tailwind back. So now that we have this, we have now um, gotten both JavaScript and CSS working. So now we have a place where we can, you know, edit tailwind if we need to edit tailwind. We now have index working. We can import from other files. We're getting them output to our main.css. Um, and there's lots more things we can do. Too much for this video. I'm going to continue this series on next week where we're going to make this a little bit more production ready because kind of as of right now, everything's unminified and uh, looking pretty gross. So in next week's video, we'll go over how we can optimize this further and add some images to this as well and optimize and compress those images. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know if I did anything wrong here. Let me know if this is a better way to go about some of this stuff. I'm always looking to learn. Um, I wanna shout out my patrons up at the top. They uh, actually suggested that I cover this topic. So shout out to them for being involved and and being supportive. So again, if you like the video, also subscribe to the channel. I have, uh, do web development tutorials. I mainly focus on WordPress, um, but I will do kind of things outside of WordPress every now and again as well. Um, but anyway, I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.